A witness in the Apple River stabbings case who didn't want her testimony seen or heard could be the person who tips the scales. Madison Cohen's altercation with defendant Nikolai Mew is what sparked the incident that turned deadly. Now, Cohen says that she confronted the defendant after she saw a group of teenagers yelling at him. Body cam video of the aftermath is the only glimpse we see of her. Take a look. He punched me in the face. I don't know what the f got someone the camera. Go help him. Please. We're going to help. We got a gentleman down there. He's just got to run in the f***ing open. Okay. A transcript of Cohen's testimony lays out what she says about who threw the first blow. So on direct, she said, he strikes me in my left side of my face with his left hand. And the question is, did he hit you with a closed fist or an open hand? She said, I can't remember. I thought it was with a closed fist. And the question is, you didn't, you don't remember like seeing it coming in though? And she said, everything happens so fast. Then later on cross exam, the question is, okay, so he throws it with his left. He throws a hook with his left hand, is that right? She said, aha, uh -huh, yes. And he said, and I think you testified that he hit your left side of your face. She said, yes. Question is, okay, so he hit you on this side. Describe how that's humanly possible. Her answer, I actually do get my lefts and my rights mixed up a little bit. Okay, is that gonna be a problem? Let's bring in our guest and talk some more about this. Criminal defense attorney and former elected district attorney, Matthew Mangino. Oh, Matthew, what'd you think when you hear that? Well, that, uh, that doesn't sound good. It's not, a, it's not a good look. You obviously can't get hit on the left side of your face with a left hook. Now, you know, she tries to explain it away by getting getting my rights and my lefts uh, mixed up. But I, I would have made her demonstrate how this happened. So if she throws with her left, obviously she's going to realize that you can't get hit on the left side of your face. Uh, so she may have explained it a little better. Uh, I don't know if there was a demonstration of that blow or not, but that certainly would have helped clear it up for the jury. If she was just testifying and she says, I got hit on the left side of my face with a left hook, the jurors are gonna pause. They're gonna say, wait a second, that's not possible. Right, Matthew, I love what you said there. And there was not a demonstration. We went all through the transcript and you're right, that could have really helped clear it up and then maybe she would have made better sense. Uh, you know, I, I'm not saying she's lying, I'm just saying, you know, that that's not good that she's saying, you know, she's an adult woman and saying I get my left and my right confused. Uh, let's look at a little more here. Um, so this is from a point in the transcript, transcript where she's being questioned uh, by the prosecutor and uh, she's talking about how she did make contact and put her hands on Nikolai Mew. She's asked, what did you do? And she said, I graciously grabbed the corner of his elbow and I got it him back toward me instead of those boys. Did you yank him? No, sir. Did you and Riley, Riley's another one of the girls involved in this, did you both touch his shoulders? Yes. Shove him? You didn't shove him or hit him, which is actually an objectionable question there, as you know, Matthew. And uh, she says no, because the defense is saying that she did shove him and was pushing him and that the strike that he delivered to her was a defensive strike. Oh my, this is messy, isn't it, Matthew? How, how does this get sorted out for the jury and I think for all of us at home struggling with not seeing her and she's not on the video. How much do you think that might matter, Matthew, for the jury that this incident wasn't caught on tape? Well, uh, there's no question that the jurors, uh, you know, like to see videotape that, that genuinely shows exactly what happened. There's a lot of videotape here, but yet there's no videotape of this encounter. Uh, you know, we didn't get to see her, we didn't get to hear her, but the jury did. So the jury has uh, that ability to uh, determine her believability or credibility. And that's what every case comes down to. You know, do you believe what this witness is telling you? Is this witness credible? And they can make those judgments. We can't, we haven't had an opportunity to see it. Uh, but again, we have to remember that self-defense you know, is it reasonable? Is your conduct reasonable? Did, did you need to lead, to use lethal force? Did you believe you were in 
danger of serious bodily injury or death. And that's really what the standard is here if we're going to talk about uh, self-defense in this case. Mm, right, Matthew. Thank you for that. Serious bodily injury or death got to be imminent, as you said. Uh, what was his belief at the time? I, I, I do have a clip I would love to play for you now. This is from witness Riley Madison. So she's friends with Madison Cohen. She calls her Maddie. So Madison Cohen, the woman who chose not to be on camera, but Riley was okay with being on camera and she really does corroborate the story that Madison tells. Let's take a look. Do you remember everything sequentially perfectly or is it choppy? It's very choppy for me. Okay. So what do you remember next? Um, I remember getting off the tube, walking up to Mr. Mayu, um, and I just remember Maddie being in there and yelling at him. Um, I remember her being punched in the face and then I remember being stabbed and that is completely it. Okay, uh, Matthew, how much does testimony like this help? Well, certainly it, it uh, corroborates what we've heard from Madison Cohen, uh, that in fact, uh, this whole incident was precipitated, certainly uh, the physicality of it was precipitated by by him punching her in the face. And, and that is consistent with her testimony uh, and it's helpful for the prosecution. Right, Matthew, it certainly reinforces their position. Uh, we'll leave it there for now and go in there live this morning when they start back up. I want to say a big thank you to Matthew Mangino for his time and expertise this morning. We'll see you soon. And that's all for this episode of Opening Statements. My friends, you can watch it or share it again if you like. Just go to courttv.com to do it.